you get a mixture of the metals right so this is called an alloy so now alloys are harder and more rigid than the metals they are composed of now because you can see this is a structure of a metal so when you hammer this the layers can slide and that's why metals are not rigid that's why they are malleable and ductile however if you look at this structure the layers cannot slide because the size of the blue and red atoms are different so because the size of the different metal atoms are different uh, the, uh, the the layers cannot slide and because the layers cannot slide alloys are rigid okay so uh, this is the explanation for it and actually alloys have several uses like most of them are are, are stainless which means uh, they do not corrode in air and that's why they are they are very good alloys of aluminium are used in airplanes Al alloys of copper and tin copper and zinc which are brass and bronze the, uh, this respectively they are used uh, in door knobs ornaments jewelry so many things so they are very useful things alloys now graphite so graphite is a giant molecular structure so what we talked in the chem talked about in the chemical bonding playlist were simple molecular structures so just to differentiate between a simple molecular structure and a giant molecular structure a simple molecular structure has intermolecular forces so you you have a molecule like this one this is a molecule and we have intermolecular forces between these two molecules so that's a simple molecular structure but in a giant molecular structure you have covalent bonding throughout the structure so you do not have you do not have intermolecular forces you have covalent bonds like this th like this so this is a giant molecular structure you have no intermolecular forces only covalent bonds so uh, giant molecular structures have higher have very high melting points and very high boiling points compared to simple molecular structures because covalent bonds are strong van der waals forces are weak intermolecular forces are weak and that's the reason so graphite is a giant molecular structure and in graphite uh, so gra uh, so before we talk about graphite it's an allotrope of carbon so allotropes are different forms of the same element which means that graphite is only made of carbon atoms so if you look at the structure of graphite this is the structure of graphite so you can see that each carbon atom all these blue atoms are carbon atoms you can see that each carbon atoms are covalently bonded to three other carbon atoms right you can see it and they are forming hexagonal rings and these hexagonal rings are forming layers and these layers are stacked over each other so you can see that this is one layer this is a, a second layer so they are stacked over each other so this is a, the structure of graphite now the thing is that these red lines are covalent bonds these blue lines are van der waals forces remember here the red lines are covalent bonds the blue lines are van der waals forces and that's why we commonly make dotted lines over here to show that they are not covalent bonds but they are van der waals forces so this means that within a layer which means within means inside a layer you have only covalent bonds and that's why graphite has a high melting point because it is very difficult to break the covalent bonds you need to give a lot of energy and between the layers not within but between the layers you have weak van der waals forces and that's why graphite is slippery and hence it can it is used as a lubricant because the thing is the thing is that these layers when you apply a pressure for example towards the right this layer can slide over this layer because these these blue lines are weak van der waals forces they are weak so you can easily overcome them so that's why graphite is slippery and is hence used as a lubricant so um the thing is that this is not a complete layer this is an incomplete layer it keeps it keeps expanding towards the left it keeps expanding towards the right and that's why it's a very it's a giant molecular structure because it's kind of never ending that's why it's a giant molecular structure and these are just two layers but there are millions of layers in graphite so that's what you need to remember now um graphite conducts electricity because the car because each carbon atom has one free electron why is this because if you see each carbon atom is bonded to three other carbon atoms right each carbon atom is bonded to three other carbon atoms so you must be thinking that why is this not bonded to three it is bonded to three but they have not shown the complete structure so this is also expanding towards this side 
and this is also expanding towards this side and even this is expanding towards this side so you can see that the layers are expanding in in one plane in all directions